Hi everyone, welcome back to Rachel's Enchanting Cakes. For this very short tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make these very effective sails. But these have been made from the confectioner's drip range. So they're already metallic, really easy to do, no painting involved. However, if you would like to make yours directly from real chocolate, simply follow the same process in this video. But at the beginning, I'm going to show you how to make the edible paint for the chocolate. Everything you need to know in a simple step-by-step -step format, as always, straight to the point. These are super easy, super quick, and an awful lot of fun. Happy baking, guys, and let's make a start. So let's pretend you're making yours from real chocolate. Here I have dipping solution, which has a very high alcohol content and the Regency Gold by Faye Carl. Now you can use any luster dust that you want. Simply mix the dipping solution with the luster dust. You don't want much of the dipping solution with this, or you can actually place your brush into the dipping solution and then into the luster dust before painting directly onto your chocolate sugar sail. It really is as simple as that. You need to let it dry completely and now allow all of the alcohol to completely evaporate. And there is your edible paint. So whether you're using the confectioner's drip, which is already metallic, or white chocolate, simply follow the instructions on the confectioner's drip. So I've melted mine in the microwave and then I place a circle directly onto some baking paper. I make sure I keep this very, very thin. I use a knife to spread it out. One very good thing about these sugar cells is they are very lightweight. They are not heavy at all. So they will stick beautifully onto the sides of a cake. But also, as you can see at the beginning of this tutorial, if you just melt a small amount of chocolate, onto some baking paper just in a little circle you can stick one directly on top. Once your chocolate or in this case confectioner's drip has not completely set but has set enough you are then able to manipulate the baking paper without the chocolate moving too much. So you want to start by folding in simple pleats like you can see me doing here I make sure that as soon as I get to the confectioner's drip or in your case chocolate, you want to make sure it's very, very well bent. And then simply place a peg just on the bottom until this sets. I find placing this in the freezer really helps speed up the setting process. That process was then repeated with the pink sherbet confectioner's glaze. So this has been taken out of the freezer just like I did with the bronze. And I start by using a very sharp knife just at the base where the baking paper is and all those pleats are actually meeting. You then want to very, very gently peel away the baking paper. Now, whether you've used chocolate or this confectioner's drip, I find it easier if the actual chocolate or the drip is touching the surface, so the baking paper is facing you, and you gently peel it away because you do not want to break your sail. If you've done yours from chocolate, this is now ready to paint. If not, you are literally finished. You can either stick this to the side of a cake or simply place a small amount of chocolate in a circle on some baking paper and stick it directly on the top. It really is as simple and as easy as that, but so, so effective. And another use for the amazing drips by Dinky Doodle. Happy baking, everyone. And I will be back soon with more new, completely free content. I really do hope you found this one useful.